This is Linux Mint 19.1 with the Cinnamon desktop. It's taken me a while to get to this because I've been busy finding leaks in other Linux distributions. Uh, so far, I haven't had a problem with this distribution using the 4.15 kernel that it uses by default. I have had problems with the alternate 4.18 kernel, but I'll get to that later. I've done two videos about Linux Mint 19, and this is just a point upgrade, so I'm not going to go into a great deal of detail, but there are a few things that are new, and one of the things that has attracted the most attention is the new panel option. When you first run Linux Mint, you'll find this welcome screen. It's very similar to the one in Linux Mint 19. But here under desktop layouts, you have a choice of the traditional panel. It's at a small panel, a traditional window list, and the Mint X theme. Or you have the modern panel, which is a large panel, grouped windows, a small system tray, and a modern looking theme. Now, I like the flat look of the modern panel, but I don't like the fact that it's large, and I don't like the fact that it doesn't have traditional window buttons. So let's see what I can do about that. I right-click on the panel and then click on Modify Panel. And then I go to Panel Settings. You can also get to this through the System Settings. Now, auto hide, I'm not going to change. It's always shown, and I'm going to leave it that way. The panel height, I forget how big it was when I first got to it. I've recreated a large panel at 48 pixels. So I'm going to change that. It doesn't drag very easily. Down to about 32. Now, it shows different size icons in different parts of the panel. On the left panel zone, which is over here, you can scale to the panel size optimally. And on the right zone, where the system tray is, and there are more icons over here, uh, they're smaller, they're 24 pixels. You can change that. The center zone is currently shown as scale to panel size optimally also. And I'm going to leave that since I reduced the panel size. But you can change those things. I'm just going to close this. Now I have simple screen recorder running, and it's just shown as an icon. It does have a little pop-up thumbnail when you go to it. But the only way to show that it's actually running is that there's a little line under the icon there. So if I click on this... It's like a regular window button. It displays and undisplays the hidden application. Now suppose I want to change this and have traditional text. I can right click on this icon and click on preferences. And then click on configure. Now let me go to Panel, Button Label, None. In other words, here's the Group Window List, and here's Simple Screen Recorder. They're both open. However, when I change this to Window Title, you can see that the Window Title opens up underneath. Uh, I could also change it to application. And in this case, it might not change. But if you have more than one document open, you don't want to list LibreOffice, LibreOffice, LibreOffice. You want the actual title of the window. So you can have those buttons. Under thumbnails, you can either show them or turn them off. Under Context Menu, you can show recent items. 
show auto start option, show new window option, apply the monitor move option to all windows. So all of those are turned on except show the auto start option. Going back here to general, um, right now it groups windows by application so that if I have two or three documents open, they're going to be grouped together. Uh, you don't have to do that. This is considered a plus by some people and not by others, so you have your choice. So that's that part of the panel. Now, the only other thing I changed is the time over here. It came this way, 3.38 p.m. So I click on the calendar, left click to get the calendar, and then I go to date and time settings. And I could use the 24 hour clock, but of course I don't want to. That's 1539. This is 339 p.m. I'm going to show display the date. It couldn't be simpler. Saturday, January 12th, 340 p.m. Perfect. Just the way I want it. It's very easy to do. The only difficult thing with Linux Mint is that unless you know where to find these things, sometimes it's a little hard finding them. But once you find them, you find that it's very easy to do. Now, there are some other changes. There's been a streamlining of the code throughout, so this is supposed to work faster than it did. This is a Nemo file manager. It's supposed to work faster than it did before. I haven't really noticed a lot of difference, but it works plenty fast. And another thing I've done is to disable all the animations that I could possibly disable. Also, as I've done in my previous videos, I, I've enabled this right hot corner to show all four workspaces. And you notice that it shows the applications that are in the workspaces even when they're minimized. So this is a very simple graphical way of changing workspaces and changing tasks. So in that respect, Cinnamon still gives you the best of the menu-driven systems and the best of the highly graphical systems. As I said, I had no trouble with the 4.15 kernel, which comes with version 19.1 by default. To get to the kernel settings, again, you have to know where to go. What you do is you left-click on Update. You go over here to View, and you go down to Linux Kernels. Here's a little lecture about proceeding with caution, and I would take this seriously because, as I said, I found that kernel version 4.15 worked fine with my system, and kernel 4.18 did not. So after you read this first page, note one thing. If you face any difficulty, you can reboot, and it says to press and hold the shift key to show the boot menu. Actually. In my case, I don't have to press and hold the shift key. That did nothing for me. My grub configuration automatically shows advanced options. So I use the down arrow to go down to advanced options, and then select an older kernel. And after the computer boots with the older kernel, uninstall the new one. So it's important to learn that lesson. So then you click on Continue, and while 4.18 is highlighted, it actually says you are currently using the following kernel, 4.15.0-43. But if I wanted to add 4.18, I could click on that, and I could then click on Install. But before that, I have the option of reading the bug reports. And it opens my web browser, which in this case is Firefox. And this seems to give you the bug reports for Ubuntu Linux with the 4.18 kernel. Now, I didn't find any bugs of the sort that I encountered listed here, but I did encounter bugs. Anyway, Linux Mint is very good in giving you this option. 
confirm close, close tabs. You can also read the change log or the CVE tracker, common vulnerabilities and exposures. So if after doing all that you want to install the Linux kernel, you just click on install. Then you have to restart and it opens with that kernel. You don't have to uninstall the old kernel, by the way. It will be listed under advanced options in the grub menu. However, when you want to go back to the old kernel, which I did, you first have to reboot in the old kernel before you can remove the new kernel. And these are the instructions I read to you earlier, and they work. Now, just briefly to let you know what I found, when I was running kernel 4.15 with Firefox running, and I had random YouTube videos playing on autoplay, so there was always something going. I was using about 1.5, 1.6 gigabytes of memory, about 40% of the total that I have installed, and zero swap. And I let it run for several hours, and it really didn't change very much. That's with kernel 4.15. The highest it ever got was about uh, 1.7 gigabytes, but then it came back down again. I was doing other things, and it fluctuated a little bit, but there was no memory leak kernel 4.15. When I first started running kernel 4.18, it ran at the same efficient level, 40%. It seemed to go along at 40% for some time. It even went down on occasion. So I didn't think I was having any problems with 4.18. However, one thing I can't show you, and I'll explain why, is that I fell asleep with the system running on kernel 4.18, and when I woke up, the memory use had climbed to about 60%. So it was on the way up, but it was not extremely high, and I was still using no swap. However, I couldn't take a screenshot because the screenshot utility had frozen solid. As a matter of fact, everything had frozen solid, and it's possible that I was actually using more than 60% of the memory because the system monitor had frozen solid. So after running kernel 4.18 overnight, my entire system had frozen solid and I had to reboot. And it's at that point that I decided to change back to kernel 4.15. Now, you may not have this problem with your computer. If you read the comments on my earlier videos about memory leaks, you'll find that people using Intel Core Series central processing units, i3, i5, i7, didn't have any problems with memory leaks. But my processor, which is a somewhat cheaper and older four-core Pentium processor, has had problems with memory leaks in kernels 4.18 and 4.19, and other people using older computers have reported other problems. One was actually unable to boot into 4.19 and had to use the 32-bit version of MX Linux. Fortunately, if you have that problem, there is a 32-bit version of MX Linux, and there's also a 32-bit version of Linux Mint 19, something I can no longer say about Ubuntu. So those are just a few new things about 19.1, which I didn't cover in my earlier videos. But I'll put a link to the earlier videos below this one. This is XRAM Tech. Thanks for watching.